hello guys welcome back so now let's start working on implementing the login user feature so first of all we will implement the backend for a login user just like we implemented for the sign up user so for that purpose inside our user folder we are going to create a new PHP file so just select this user just like this and then click on this icon button new file and you can also create a new file inside the user folder when you right click on this user folder and you will see this option new file okay so you can also create it from here as well so you can simply give it name as uh, login.php login.php okay inside the user folder you can see our login.php file is created successfully so now just for the time saving I'm going to the sign up backend code and I will simply copy this whole piece of code from here okay copy this from here and let's close this and on the login.php I will simply paste that code in here of course now we will change it according to the login user implementation so first of all we have to include the connection then we have to remove this username because in the flutter application on the sign in page on the login page we take two inputs from the user one is the user email the other one is the user password so when the user click on the login button we pass from the app the user email and user password uh, to our this login.php backend that is we communicate with the help of our this api closed store with the help of this API, we uh, our Flutter application communicate with the server, MySQL server, which I have explained many times. So I hope now you have the idea about this. So the email comes here, okay, and we assign it to this PHP user email variable. Then the password come here, and we assign it to this user password PHP variable. And as you know that at the time when we were saving uh, password to the database okay then we convert it to hash that is to secure form or you can say to binary form so that's why now when we uh, want to log in so we will first convert the user password to hash okay that is in the database it is saved in hash form and it is not saved as it is that's why we write md5 with it okay that is calculate the md5 hash of a string so then uh, we have to write our query so we are going to select this time from the users table okay the record uh, that is the email which will match with the user email and the password which will match with the user password in the database okay in the database in the users table so we say select all star represents all select all from please use the same keyword okay so select all from users table where where you do not need the username you know that we have email and password so we say that select all from users table in the database where the email column contain this user email which the user type in the text field in flutter application and and another condition will be and okay that is and user password is equals to the user password which the user type in the text field in the flutter application on the login page so it is so simple and so easy that is first of all from the users table okay select all from users table that is within the all records in the users table we want that specific record where where the user column contain the email which is, which the user type in the login page in flutter application in the text field of email okay so our you where the user email column in the database the user email column contain that specific email which the user type in the email text field in the flutter application in the login page okay so the user email column must contain that email okay if it contains that specific email and and that is alongside with this that is user email column contain that specific user email which the user typed in the text field 
and alongside with that we also want that user password will must contain the user password which the user typed that is if the email uh, if the email and if the password is correct if the email and if the password is correct that is if it is found in the sql mysql database in the users table then simply run this query okay and assign the response of it to this result of query variable so if the record found that is when any record is found okay so it means that we will have one row that is one record just like we did in the validate email.php that is if any uh, record found for what purpose that is where the user email contain the user email and user password contain the correct user password so if any record found after executing this query then it simply means that it will bring us a uh, number row num rows that is the length will be one that is one record found let's say okay so we can here use the php built-in function which is num rows just like we use in the validate email.php that is num rows so if any record found which simply means that if the email and password is correct if the email and password is correct then the num rows will be one so here we will uh, write a condition that is it must be greater than zero so when the num rows is greater than zero it simply means that one okay so that we can simply write here that is allow login user allow user to login you can say allow user to login otherwise if the email and password is not correct if the email and password is not correct then the result from the database will come that is num rows length will be zero no row found for the email and password okay so the num rows length will be zero so when it is zero it simply means that do not allow do not allow user to login now in case of successful login we also want to get that specific user record whole record as you know in the mysql database i have told you uh, in the previous videos that is the record is saved uh, in rows the record each record for each user the record is saved in rows okay so now one by one that is let's say if john is trying to log in john at the red gmail.com and this is the password so if the email and password is correct then we have to retrieve the john uh, record that is the user id of john username of john user email of john and user password of john one by one we have to get that so for that purpose we can say that let's initialize a variable and we will give it name as user user record equals to array and then as we will fetch one by one that is the user id user name user email and user password of john so for that purpose we will use a loop and we will use the while loop so we can say while row let's give it name as row found the row found in the database and we will get from the result of query so result of query fetch asoc this one fetch underscore asoc and the row which is found we will assign that record that row found record to our variable which is user record so what we have done here well uh, you know that when the when the number of length is greater than zero so it simply means that we allow the user to log in that is the record found okay and it is in the case when the user email and the user password which is provided by the user in the text field if they are correct so if they are correct and if it is found in the database then 
you know that now we have the record which we can fetch using our result of query so what we do here as you know one by one we will get for example let's say John uh, login successfully so one by one that is we have to get the user ID of John which is one username of John that is John and user email which is John at the red gmail.com and then the pass user password of John which is in hash form okay you can see here so one by one we have to fetch each and every information for John so that's why we have to run a for loop and we run this for loop on our result of query fetch SOC simply means that it is the built-in function in PHP language okay and it basically fetches a result row fetches a result row as an associative array that is it will fetch this row as an associative array okay so that it will uh, you can say bring or fetch or read that specific record let's say in case if John is trying to log in okay so it will fetch this specific row this specific row it will fetch so that we assigned to our row found that is this row which has been fetched we assign it to our row found and the while loop run that is this is basically the condition for while loop so when it stands true only then the while condition will run that is we fetch that associative uh, array that is that specific user record and in the condition as you know it is assigned to the row found so the while loop run and that row found we assign to our this user record which is also of array type you can say okay which is array so you can say that that row found associative array we assign that is that record found that row found or you can say that row found which is basically an associative array that is which contains the user found information the, info, the user uh, who logged in successfully that user uh, that specific user record is inside this row found so that uh, record we assign to our user record uh, array so as now we have inside this user record we have the user information so then outside the while loop uh, first also we have to pass now some information to the flutter application as a response for example uh, the success key we will assign the value true so on the basis of this we will tell to the user that is you are login successfully and we will send the user from the login page to the main application that is to the home screen which we will implement and alongside with that we will also pass the user information which we fetch which is inside the user record array so for that purpose the second parameter alongside with the success okay let me just break this in pieces so that we can see it easily just like this so we can say comma and the next thing that we want to pass is basically the user record that is the user data so you can uh, we have to write for it a key name and assign the value uh, the data so I will give it name as the key name okay user data just like this and the values which are saved which is saved inside the user record so we can say dollar user record okay in the user record array we have the complete user data which has been fetched successfully from the database and the as you know it is in raw format it will be in raw format as you know we have fetched it as associative array okay and then we assign that to our user record so it will also be in uh, you can say in a row format okay that is inside the array we want it from the zeroth index okay that complete data we want to get so that complete row which contains the user ID username user email user password okay we assign that is we pass this user record complete record uh, with the uh, key name user data just like we pass success in the same way we uh, we write here the key name user data and we pass 
uh, with this key name we pass the whole user record which we will receive in the flutter application by the same key name user data so i hope now you understand this whole piece of code which is so simple and so easy while in case of uh, that is if the email is incorrect or let's say if the password is incorrect or let's say email and password both are incorrect then in that case the numbers length will be zero so the else statement will execute that is it will not allow the user to log in so in that case to the success key we will assign the value false that is on the basis of it we will display a message in the flutter application to the user that is you are not allowed to log in because your password or email is incorrect or you can say this record do not find in the database so this is all about our backend of login.php make sure to click file and save all okay save all this code so let me just give you a short review what we have done in this video so when we communicate from the flutter application uh, uh, to the server uh, with the help of our API closed store then basically from the flutter application we will pass two things the user email and the user password from the text field and we assign it to the re to their required variables user email PHP variable and user password PHP variable on these two things we run our SQL query that is in the MySQL database in the users table we check if we found any record any row which contain the correct user email and the correct user password so if any row found it means the length will be one so the number of length will be one so if it is greater than zero which simply means greater than zero means one so it means uh, the record found and the user is allowed to log in and otherwise if the user password email is incorrect then the num rows that is the response coming from the uh, mysql server or you can say mysql database the num rows length in that case will be zero that is no row found no row found simply means no record found so the num rows length will be equals to zero in that case and in that case else statement will execute okay that is do not allow the user to log in so when the user is allowed to log in in that case you already know that uh, this piece of code is just for the login okay now we also want in case when the when the login is successful in that case we also want to fetch that specific user record let's say john login successfully so we also want to fetch the user id user name user email user password of that specific user so for that purpose first we initialize user record array and then we run a while loop and in php we have a fetch associ associative uh, built-in function basically uh, which bring uh, which fetch or which read that specific row on which the query is executed successfully okay so from the result of query which is the query which is executed successfully so from this result of query we fetch that specific record with the help of it or you can say from that we fetch that specific that specific row that specific row okay that specific row we fetch that specific record or that specific row we fetch and we assign it to row found and it is also the condition in the while loop so the while loop will run and it will assign the whole row information the whole record information it will assign or you can say it will save it to the user record array and then we have to pass it as you know we will pass back the response to our flutter application so to the flutter application the response we pass is basically the success key has a value true that is we will on the basis of it we will tell to the user you are logged in successfully and we will send the user from the login page to the home screen and then also we pass the user data the complete user data the complete user record which found we pass that information with the key name user data to the flutter application so by the same key names we have to receive this information in the flutter application